We begin today with Corey in the house, actually not in the house, he's Corey in the cafe currently. Corey's band DC3 is practicing and Corey tells them they sound aight, but overall they're lame as hell and they need to be better. Corey managed to get Vince Valentine to come watch them play by sending him emails from the Oval Office which seems illegal somehow, but it's Disney, so I can't question them or they might get me out of here, so it's cool. Corey suggests they hold auditions for a keyboard player, and Mina says some dumb stuff about fun. Girl, we trying to get paid. We start off with this girl Gladys playing chopsticks with some chopsticks, which I feel like they did not need to point out explicitly what's going on because I wanted to sound smart by pointing it out myself. They've been auditioning people all day and are almost willing to accept mediocrity. They must have been talking too loud because this hall monitor comes up to them. Shelby from Hustle and Flow starts doing the beat to whoop that trick and everyone's hype. Mina is still hating without offering any actual solutions. That's about as useful as a fish with lip fillers. They tell Stickler Wonder that he's in the band and he screams in excitement. If he actually would have heard them earlier, I wonder if he would feel the same. He even gives them all silver wristbands. He then turns around and does some good old exposition. The silver band is a rhythm destabilizer and it's gonna make them all off beat. He then starts melting or K-holing or something here. They're getting ready to practice. Stickler turns on his wristband, which I think just controls black people like robots. Corey is super trash now, and I'm not a million percent sure when Stickler's device is gonna kick in. Stickler suggests that we just replace Corey's trash ass with some pre-made beats that I have on my keyboard, which kind of cheating, and I definitely don't think that's gonna impress Vince Valentine. Back at the Caucasian house, Corey's dad is mad as hell he ever spent money on drum lessons for Corey. Corey starts trying to swallow his tongue or something and nobody even helps him. They just sit around and stare at him judging. He's gonna go and take some medicine for that or something. Corey is in the couch and he's watching behind the music. It's apparently about his band, so clearly this is a dream. He's homeless and dusty outside of their concert, dressed like battle rapper T-Rex. He smells right. like a double entendre, don't ask me how, and the band laughs at him when he asks to join again. He wakes up and realizes he has to get his band back. We're back at the library cafe and the owner presents Wesley Pipes to the audience. They're going wild. Right when the band gets on stage, Corey comes running in. He says he's just gonna play through the wackness, which is a unique concept. The nerd tries to turn off his control for the Asiatic black android, but he snaps off the lever. Corey proceeds to black the hell out and just be a menace to society. He's breaking shit with his drumsticks and even almost stabs the goofy owner with a Kimbo throwing sticks. He ends it by playing the grinding beat on Wesley Pipe's head, which is not how you show respect to a legend. Everyone evacuates the building. Stickler tries to vote Corey out the band. Everyone tells him that he's nuttier than the oil that Five Guys uses if he thinks that's gonna happen. They kick Stickler out for the mutiny. Corey gives him back his bracelet and does some terrible dance moves so it might have some lasting effects. Corey inspects the watch and the back says property of the CIA. The only logical solution is the CIA is using Stickler to plant rhythm destruction in black neighborhoods to destroy our culture. Not cool. They're all going to beat this rat's ass. 